Today, Trent and I are here at Burgers Etc. in Rupert, and this is one of the best places to get French fries. However, there's a disease out there that is, able to, is capable of destroying both the fries, which we eat, and the fry sauce, which we use to dip the fries in, and that's late blight. Late blight was the same disease which caused the Irish potato famine, and it's still with us today. In 1845, the Irish potato crop was hit by an unknown blight that would have looked much like what we're seeing right here. The estimates are that the blight took out anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of the Irish crop. The following year, in 1846, it's estimated that they lost 75 percent of all the potatoes. At the time, they had no idea what was causing the blight, but that disease, combined with other cultural and economic factors, result resulted in the Great Irish Potato Famine. And in that famine, uh, it's estimated a million people died and another million at least emigrated from Ireland to other places. We still have that disease with us today. In 1860, a German scientist determined it was caused by a fungal-like organism, and it was called Phytophthora infestans. Now that's not really a true fungus, but it acts and behaves like one. And so typically today, we, we treat it like a fungus. So this is today, this is a, a, a plot of russet Burbank potatoes which have not been treated with any fungicide. We have late blight which has been in the area and it has come in and started to decimate this plot right here. We have lesions that are on the leaves, on the stem, and when we get to harvest we'll be able to dig these potatoes up and it's likely that we'll have lesions on the tubers themselves. And that can become very problematic. When the tubers are placed into storage, the late blight infections can lead to secondary soft rot, and the soft rot can take out an entire potato storage. It's very common with late blight to have a lesion start on the petiole of the leaf, and then the fungus itself will grow out and start to destroy the leaves on either side. On the back side, oftentimes we'll get sporulation which will occur right around the margin of the lesion. It's easily possible for this pathogen to produce anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000 spores just on a single square inch of potato tissue. The spores are easily spread by rain or to some degree by irrigation and they can move in the wind. The spores themselves are fairly weak and they don't last very long in the presence of UV radiation or when it gets dry, but when we have storm fronts come through and the humidity increases and the sun's blocked out, those spores can last much longer. When the spores fall down on the soil and they get in the soil, they can last for up to a week. The pathogen can also cause lesions on the stem, and those stem lesions are much more maybe important to the epidemic than the leaf lesions with respect that they will last much longer. So if we go through periods of hot, dry weather, the late blight almost, it, it almost goes dormant. I mean, not quite, it's still growing, but not as fast. And some of those leaf lesions will die and the leaves will fall off. And when the leaves die, the pathogen dies. The stem lesions can stay active for as long as that stem is viable. Here's an example of one of the stem lesions of Phytophthora infestans. It's this darkened area from here to here. And so this lesion has the possibility to produce spores, which could then wash down the soil and infect tubers for the life of this vine. Now, on this side, we have potato plants which have been protected with fungicide sprays. So, in this area, we have different treatments, where some have been sprayed on a seven-day schedule and others on a 14-day schedule. And what we have seen so far is that the plants that have been treated every seven days have almost no late blight in them. In fact, you can see how the disease has come all the way to this point right here, and there's almost a line between what is infected and what is healthy. And the primary difference is this has been controlled with fungicides or been protected with fungicides. So where we've gone on a 14-day schedule or sprayed every other week, we do have a little bit of late blight, but we haven't found any yet on the seven-day schedule. So in short, the fungicides that we have available to us, and there are many, they are very effective in controlling the disease if they are applied often enough and they're done at the right time. If they're, if they're applied late or the interval stretched out too far, then the plants have the, the, they're open to becoming infected. 
A good way to think of these fungicides is to think of them like sunscreen. Um, you need to put it on before the exposure occurs for them to do any good. And you have to reapply because the fungicides get worn off through water or through irrigation or rain or simply through just being broken down by being exposed to the sun.